Mr. Speaker, we've heard quite a bit tonight of the life and legacy of a, of a great human being, a great warrior for peace and justice, um, Congressman Ron Dellums. Let me um, highlight a couple of, a couple of stories that uh, weren't highlighted tonight that I would like to share. Uh, first of all, um, Ron really worked in a bipartisan fashion on many, many issues. And I remember uh, that uh, Ron and former Speaker Newt Gingrich, I remember them talking about collaborating on a book together. This was really a time of true bipartisanship. Also, Ron called himself a feminist, and he believed in e equality for women. And this just wasn't lip service. He followed his convictions in his hiring practices. Ron hired women and women of color in the early 70s and took pride in employing a diverse staff. When I worked for Ron in the 70s, I was one of a very few African Americans and only a couple African American women in key senior staff positions on Capitol Hill. But he made certain that I was treated fairly and empowered me to manage his office. Ron had remarkable female role models, including his mother, Mrs. Willa Delms. She was a major influence on Ron and taught him to be proud that he was an American of African descent. She taught him that his culture and his heritage was an important part of who he was as a human being and as an elected official. Ron was really the big brother that I never had. He gave me personal advice and support as a single mom raising two boys here in Washington, D.C. And he loved children. When my son Craig graduated from Brent Elementary School around the corner from the Capitol, he asked Ron to be his uh, graduation speaker. Mind you, this was, I believe, in the sixth grade. Ron left the Hill, spoke at the graduation, took pictures, and talked to the children afterwards. And mind you, these were young children. They didn't have political clout. They couldn't vote, but Ron didn't mind. He did this out of the goodness of his heart because he loved children and cared about their future. And when Ron retired, I announced my candidacy for his seat. He introduced me at my campaign kickoff. He literally passed a blue baton to me at that kickoff, which I will cherish forever. But that baton reminds me of his impact on the world both in the policies that he championed and in all of those he inspired to follow in his footsteps. Ron didn't serve in public office for the glory. He served to make life better for other people. He used to tell his staff, don't measure decisions by what is politically expedient. Just ask yourself, is this the right thing to do? And if it is, then go ahead and do it. You don't need to ask me about that. In his final weeks on this earth, I had the privilege to visit Ron several times and spent my birthday, July 16th, with him in the evening. He was in rare form, telling stories, toasting our friendship, and singing happy birthday to me. Yet he was frail, in pain, but all along he demonstrated a sense of hope and courage, even as he knew he would meet his maker soon. As Ron lived with dignity and respect, doing it, all his way. He left this earth exhibiting courage and a sense of peace, reminding me of the scriptures. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. There is no more fitting way to honor the memory of Congressman Dellums than for us to lift his legacy in the spirit of respect for different points of views, for sticking to one's values, principles, and fighting to make this a better world for all. It's an honor of a lifetime to carry the baton which Ron passed on to me in our shared fight for justice, peace, and equality. But most importantly, as Ron said, we must secure the future for generations unborn. And that is what this blue baton reminds me of. Thank you again, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank all of those who have been here tonight to share the memory and celebrate the life and mourn the loss of my friend, my former boss, the great Congressman Ronald Dellums.